Over the past few years, I've gotten a chance to review Vegas 18, Vegas 19, and now Vegas 20. And over the past few years, the team over at Vegas Creative Software has really started zeroing in on their target user and creating an NLE that gives content creators like you and me all the tools that they need in order to create amazing videos. But did they continue that trend with their latest release? Let's find out. Okay, little bit of disclosure before we get started. This video is not sponsored by Vegas Creative Software. They did give me a copy of Vegas 20 for the purposes of doing this review, but no money exchanged hands. They don't get any say in what I say in this video, and they don't get to see this video before it's published. Also, some of the features I'm going to be mentioning in this review are specific to the Vegas Post 365 subscription plan. I'll try to point them out as I go, but at the very least, all of that'll be broken down when I go over the pricing options towards the end of the video. And with all of that out of the way, let's get started. One of the things that continues to impress me about Vegas is just how easy it is to get started. Once you install and activate the software, all you have to do is open it up and it will take you right to the main interface so you can start editing. And on top of that, if you already had a project that you were working on, Vegas will automatically open up the most recent project you were working on. For contrast, in DaVinci Resolve, you first have to go to the project manager and either choose an existing project or start a new one. This is much more streamlined and more in line with what I think the more typical content creator would be looking for in their workflow. That's right. I think Vegas actually does some things better than DaVinci Resolve. Once the software is open, you can then open up the properties to change the parameters of your project. Vegas has a ton of presets and they're all customizable, so it's really super easy to get editing quickly. And going along with the idea of getting up and running quickly, importing footage into Vegas is also super, super fast. I mean, sure, you can go the traditional route of going to file, import media, then navigating to your files on your computer. But the quickest, easiest way to get your files into your project is to use the Explorer tab, which lets you browse the contents of your computer right from within Vegas. You can even start editing your footage right from that Explorer page. So again, they've really set up an optimized workflow that allows you to just get in there and start making stuff. It's it's pretty cool. And now that you have your project set up and you have access to your media, you're free to start editing, which is where I actually found my first little hiccup. It's not a huge deal and I'm probably being a little nitpicky, but the workflow of getting footage from the Explorer into the timeline just doesn't promote that same streamlined workflow that we saw in the project setup phase. Let me explain. In most cases, when I'm editing something like a vlog or I'm cutting up screen recordings, I typically send my footage from the media pool to the preview monitor to set my in and out points. Then, then I bring in only the sections I want into the timeline. Now, technically speaking, you can still do this in Vegas, but it's a bit clunky. First of all, the trimmer and the video preview window are in the same window. So you have to click over into the trimmer in order to get your footage into it. On top of that, in Resolve, double-clicking footage in your media pool sends the clip to the trimmer by default. In Vegas, it sends the clip to the timeline. So the default workflow for getting only parts of clips into a timeline in Vegas is to first open up the trimmer, then drag your file into the trimmer, then set your in and out points, then drag them into the timeline. Then to watch the timeline, you have to click back over into the video preview monitor and play your video. Luckily, the GUI layout of Vegas 20 is customizable, so you can easily set it up to where the trimmer and the preview windows are side by side, which is how I prefer it. And you can set the double click to send clips to the trimmer instead of the timeline. So really, all of the options to make this a perfectly optimized workflow are there. They're just not there by default. You have to do a little bit of work to make it exactly like you want it. For the most part though, you have everything you need in order to do a basic edit. You can set in and out points, split, delete, ripple delete, separate audio from video. It's all there. Well, 
Almost. See, there's something that I've been complaining about since I first got my hands on Vegas 18 that still hasn't been added and it kind of drives me crazy. For some reason, there still isn't any way to do frame by frame scrubbing with audio. You can hear audio when you're grabbing the playhead on the main timeline, but when you use the left and right keys, you get silence. And there's absolutely no way that I've found to be able to do any kind of scrubbing with audio in the trimmer. And I know to some people this isn't a big deal, but I tend to make very frame specific cuts, not so much in my vlogs, but definitely in tutorials. And I rely heavily on the audio to inform me on where to make those cuts. So please, please add the ability to turn on audio when doing frame by frame scrubbing. It's a feature that many, many people will thank you for. Other than that though, I really enjoyed the experience of cutting footage in Vegas. I really didn't feel like anything was lacking as far as available tools were concerned. And once I got my head wrapped around some of the keyboard shortcuts, cutting got way easier. Let's talk about color grading. This is an area where Vegas has improved a lot over the last few versions, and that's no different here. For one, they fixed everything that I said needed to be fixed with the color grading panel. They added in white balance, which is amazing, and you can now add the color grading effect anywhere you want. For context, you used to only be able to add the color grading effect at the clip level. Now you can add it to clips, events, video buses, and yes, even the track level. This means that I can add an adjustment track to my timeline to create my overall look, then add it to the individual clips to do some adjusting. It's like it was always supposed to be. You can't imagine how excited I am about this. Now, keep in mind, we're not talking about DaVinci Resolve level color grading here. Still, you've got all the things you need, like wheels, curves, contrast, HSL, HSL curves, and even LUT support. They even have built-in conversion LUTs for people who shoot in log and scopes to make sure your image is looking the way you want it to. Well done, Vegas. This is actually pretty amazing. Let's move on to audio. Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but I might as well say it again, just in case you didn't catch it in my previous videos on Vegas. When Vegas was first launched, it wasn't an NLE. It was a DAW. That's Digital Audio Workstation, for those of you who didn't know. Over the years, Vegas Creative Software has built in the NLE functionality around the old DAW system, but it still operates very much like an audio editor, which means that editing audio in Vegas is actually a pretty cool experience. You've got literally everything you need, and Vegas has added a couple new features, like track optimized effects, which are effects that are optimized to be used at the track level. By default, the track noise gate, track EQ, and track compressor are already added to each audio track, which will definitely save you some time. You also have the ability to normalize audio, adjust levels, and do basically whatever else you need to do even automation. Although, unless you're using an audio mixing board, I would just leave that part alone. The only issue is, just like in Vegas 19 and Vegas 18, the built-in audio effects are just a little too clunky for my taste. They work fine, but they don't give me the amount of control that I would like. Then again, I'm very picky about audio, so it could just be me. Luckily, Vegas allows you to export video to an external audio editor like SoundForge or my personal preference, Isotopes RX Advanced. By the way, I do that with my audio in Resolve 2. Like I said, I'm picky. And Vegas supports audio plugins. In fact, Vegas 20 now supports VST3 plugins, which is super cool. Still, if you don't mind learning how the effects chains work in Vegas and you don't mind using the built-in tools, you can make your audio sound great in Vegas Pro 20 without all of the external stuff. And that brings us to visual effects. Vegas does have a good amount of capabilities built in, like blurs, fish eyes, stitching, rays, and even motion track. But if you really want to take advantage of Vegas's VFX capabilities, you're going to want to use Vegas FX, which comes with the Vegas Pro 365 subscription. It works a lot like dynamic linking with the Adobe products. Simply right click on your clip and select edit in Vegas FX. Vegas FX will open and you can do all of the visual effects you want. Vegas FX looks a lot like After Effects, but I did notice that it performs a lot better on my PC. It it doesn't have everything After Effects has, but it has everything you might need as a content creator. And if you're used to layer-based compositors, it should be pretty easy to learn. Plus they've added optical flow motion tools. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to go deep into Vegas Effects here. Just know that while Vegas Pro does have some VFX capabilities, Vegas Effects is really going to allow you to create some pretty cool stuff. 
Okay, so that's all the stuff that Vegas has that for the most part, everybody has. I mean, every reputable NLE is gonna have basic editing tools, the ability to customize the layout and default functions and color grading, audio, visual effects, everyone has that. Let's talk about what makes Vegas 20 unique because Vegas does have some features that not a lot of other NLEs have. For instance, Vegas Hub, which gives access to a ton of really cool stuff like stock footage, music and sound effects, expansion packs, example products, and even gives you quick access to how-to videos, forums, and the latest social media posts from Vegas. Those stock assets have an unlimited license, by the way, so you can use them in literally any project you want, even film and television. And then once you've acquired the stock assets, they're forever available to you in the Hub Explorer, which is kind of like the regular Explorer, except it only shows you stuff that you got from Vegas Hub. And speaking of Vegas Hub, there's actually a Vegas Hub mobile app that allows you to transfer footage that you shot on your phone directly into Vegas Pro, which is an amazing feature for people who use their phones to create content. There's also project notes, which allow you to create timestamp notes to help make the collaboration process smoother. Although I still wish that there was some kind of indication on the actual timeline when there are notes that need to be seen. Still, it's a very handy feature when working with other editors. And you can't forget what might be my favorite feature of all text-to-speech, which lets you create audio clips from text that you can input into your timeline. This can literally be used to create entire dialogue clips from a script if you want, but I kind of like playing around with it for more simple things, like this. Hello. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more video editing content. Pretty cool, right? Okay, let's talk about pricing. And I know this is where I'm gonna lose some of you because yes, Vegas is going with a subscription model. Good news though, it's a lot less expensive than some other subscriptions out there. And considering it comes with access to things like stock footage, music, sound effects, and continuous updates, I can honestly see why they're sticking with the subscription model. So there are three tiers to choose from, Vegas Edit, Vegas Pro, and Vegas Post. They all give you access to Vegas Hub, File Drop, and Mobile to Timeline, but the access to these features changes depending on which subscription you choose. Vegas Edit, which is normally $12.99 a month, will give you access to those features and the Vegas Pro software. Vegas Pro, which is normally $19.99 a month, will add on text-to-speech and speech-to-text features and give you access to Vegas Stream, SoundForge Audio Studio, Boris FX Premat Studio, and an Action VFX starter subscription. And then there's Vegas Post, which is normally $29.99 a month. That gives you everything in Vegas Pro plus Vegas Effects and Vegas Image, which we didn't even talk about in this video. But the short version is it's a layer-based image editor that actually allows you to send individual frames from Vegas Pro to it in order to create thumbnails or whatever you want. It's pretty cool. So let's talk about who Vegas 20 is for, because I really think they're kind of hitting a sweet spot here. I mean, it's not really a hobbyist software. Like if you're just looking to throw something quick together, like a home movie or something, I'd probably pass on Vegas. For one, it's gonna get expensive pretty quickly if you're not making money from your videos. And two, it just has a lot of stuff that you really aren't going to use. But then on the other hand, you're not going to be creating any TV shows or feature films on Vegas either. It, the workflow just isn't optimized for that. And I think it's missing some of the more robust tools that someone editing those projects would be looking for. I think Vegas 20, just like Vegas 19, and even more so with some of the features they've been adding is for that professional content creator and wedding filmmaker group. It's got the tool set that you need in order to get your videos looking and sounding great. And most of the workflow is geared towards a quick turnaround. Plus the subscription price can be justified if you're making money from the work that you do. And I think it's that whole optimized workflow thing that really impresses me about Vegas 20. In the Vegas creative software team in general, they've really spent the last few years laser focused on creating a set of tools that is kind of geared towards that content creator wedding filmmaker market. They're not focused on bringing you like every single tool that you could ever possibly need in creating overcomplicated and overwhelming software. They really just wanna cut out the fluff and give you everything that you need 
and none of the stuff that you don't. It's flexible enough to be able to customize the workflow how you want it, but not so much that it gets confusing to use. It just, it hits that sweet spot. So if you're a content creator or freelancer that's looking to change things up, Vegas 20 will be linked below so you can check that out. They're actually doing a sale right now and you can get 33% off until November 15th. So, you know, go do that. Then go watch this video right here where I try out another NLE that you might find interesting. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching. Cat, what? What are you doing?